Hi, my name's Craig Simpson and I'm a New Zealand Land Care Trust project coordinator working with the Pathway for the Pomahaka catchment project. We're here today to talk about basic water sampling for those of you who want to do their own water quality monitoring. So where the Otago rules state that you would take a water sample is at the discharge point from your property or farm. So you've also got to consider which part of the river to take the sample from. We wouldn't want to go to areas where there's banks slumping because you might get uh, high deposits of phosphorus in your sample and we also wouldn't want to go to parts of the river where there's ponding because then you might get stagnated water. So we want to choose a part of the river where it's reasonably fast flowing uh, with a good steady flow such as we've got uh, below us here. So the first thing we do is before we take our samples we label the bottle with the site name, the date and the time of sampling. On a notepad we can also note any other environmental conditions which might influence the sample such as heavy rainfall or a dry period. For the Otago water plan there are two types of sampling bottles which will be needed. The larger one here will be used for nitrates, phosphorus and ammonia and the smaller one will be for E. coli and this is a sterile container. When you're taking the sample you want to enter the stream from downstream of where you'll be sampling. As if you entered upstream, sediment can run down and you'll capture that in your sample. So when we take a sample, we want to plunge the bottle under the surface, neck downwards, and then tilt it so it faces upstream, like this. Tilt the bottle, fill it at least halfway, and rinse it three times. After each rinse, discard the contents downstream from the sampling point. So that's two rinses. Three rinses. And now we'll take the sample which will go to the laboratory. Yeah. Once it's full to the top, take it out of the water and cap it tightly, ready to go to the laboratory. For the E. coli sample, usually it's a sterile bottle, and by rinsing it you can actually introduce contamination, so it's best just to take the single sample once without rinsing. So the same method applies, plunge it neck downwards into the water and then tilt it so it's facing upstream. Tip it out so it's just about a centimetre below the top of the container. Again cap it tightly and be sure not to touch the inside of either the lid or the container. Once we've got the samples, keep them cool in a chilli bin and get it to the laboratory within 24 hours for analysis. You can get sampling bottles from any local laboratory. If you have any questions or want more information regarding sampling, please contact me on the number below.